Don't forget why we're doing this. Something isn't right. First thing, that needs to come down. Why wasn't there any corn in the field? Stuff never grew. Mom purchased this land for God knows what reason. I've never liked scarecrows. This isn't any old scarecrow. Locals say that the land is cursed. Someone is out here. This is Kate Sanderson, horror actress based in the UK. Please check out Gruesome Herzog's interviews and reviews. They are awesome. Hello, everyone. My very special guest is an actress from the United Kingdom, Kate Sanderson. Kate, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm very happy to be here. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much. I've been following you for quite a while. A um, bunch of movies from since 2020 obviously with mm. the horror films. That's where I got to know you from, you know, with Nicola Wright and uh, been watching you girls, ladies, actresses in movies yes. that I really adore. A lot of people in America um, don't really know much about um, the films I'm talking about. Now they are on YouTube, You're free to watch, majority of them are. And mm -hmm. I like to spread the word about your work and about the films over there because I've quite enjoyed them. I've seen quite a bit of them. And oh, well, that's good to hear. Million, there's still 8 million more to go yet. But you, my my friends, I caught you in a couple of movies through the years. But two movies that I caught you in that I really enjoyed was the Amityville Scarecrow 1 and 2. Oh, thank I, you for saying that. No I, making those films. I will talk about that briefly. But I want to talk about a film that you're in. Now, I think... Uh, Nicola was in it too, I think, was Medusa, Beauty is the Beast in 2020. You played a cult member. Now, is that your That's first, right. Is that your first uh, first time with the uh, company that we're talking about? No. Um, funnily enough, my, my first uh, part with them was in the, it was a thriller, not a horror film. It was a thriller called The Gardener. And it was, a, yeah. in the, it was finally released by Lionsgate. And then I was in Bats, The Awakening, and the Medusa film, um, Scott was very, very happy about Medusa. He just loved the script, passionate about it, and he asked a number of actresses that he knew to just come along and be the cult, kind of as a bit of fun, you know, because yeah, we yeah. had the flaming torches, and it was a it was just a, it was a nice day. It was it was late. It was a late one, but it was just fun. And Scott asked us to come along and and be in the cult, so we were all happy to do that. And it was it was lovely. And uh, Nicole, as she had a big role in Medusa as the kind of brothel madam. Yes. And, uh, I mean, she's such a lovely person. It's completely against against her uh, type. Um, but but she had a wonderful role, and I just had that little part. But it was nice, lovely to be there. And. Um, but uh, it was it was comparatively a small part for me to do for for Scott. Now you, you mentioned about a small part. Um, I'm an actor, also in movies, and a voice actor right. as well. And, you know, small parts are just as good as the big parts. And there, I say that because the part that you were in, I noticed you. And ah. You see what I mean? It's I noticed you from there on. And I, certain actresses, you know, I like all kinds, obviously, but. The ones that are, are, are in my age group is the right. ones that I really tend to attach myself to because right. we we had our life. We're going. We mean we have a, plenty of experiences with life itself and mm -hmm. movies itself. 
and to watch you play a mother, you know, it's just, it's, I just adore you for what you've oh, done. I, and I, I love, love playing a mom. Yeah. And, and I, Nicola, I love her as well, but you're two of my favorites. I've gotten to know and film so far that I really enjoy watching. Well, I'm, I'm so thrilled that you noticed me in Medusa because I, I think most people probably wouldn't have especially i mean i enjoyed doing it but i'm it's interesting you i stood out to you there gosh that's really interesting well that that encourages me if i have a small role i'll you know i'll, I'll feel more positive about it <laughs> well you should be positive because you know when when we start talking about the amityville franchise um mm -hmm. there they'll get to know more about you the ones who do watch it um yes it just the way you perform you know it's like it's like watching my mother and that's not a slam oh. because you had that roll down pretty good. You and your sister, uh, mm -hmm. great, great tag team there. I thought that was a great, you know, going from the first film to the your relationship in the second film about the campsite. That, that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that was super. You're also in a film called Bats in 2021 that I've noticed you in. Yes, um, yes, I was a grandma in that one. Yeah, so that was more like your first creature feature. Am I, am I correct? You're right. Yes, oh, yes. Um. The, the part I played was going to be played by a male actor. He was going to be a grandpa. And uh, I think we, we COVID was just starting to take off. And I must say, I was so busy, I hadn't really paid much attention. But anyway, he felt unsafe to come and film his role. So Scott, having met me on, on The Gardener, suddenly phoned up and said, could I come onto location for a week and, and play this part as a grandmother? And they'd just alter the role. And I was thrilled. I said, sure, that's great. And I got there and it was a fantastic chance. So that gentleman, he lost the role, but it, I gained gained it. So yeah. that was super. And uh, then in, on the last day of filming, literally that last day, the country was closed down into lockdown. We all had to go home and they had just got the last scene in the can, basically filming overnight. And we just all had to go home in the morning. So it was it was quite dramatic in a way. Yeah, but you know what? Um, you played Georgie King, by the way, with, mm -hmm. for, for the listeners. Um, yes. I love Scott's films. I mean, mm -hmm. he just puts them out there. You know, it's kind of funny, though. Any other filmmaker that would put that many films out, you tend to lose quality. Yes. But it seems yeah. to me like um, majority of the ones that he's done, the, the mm -hmm. quality is great. The acting was great. Um you're also in a film that I've seen both of them, Conjuring mm -hmm. the Genie. Conjuring the Genie, I thought, was one of the most unique uh, films that I've seen because, you know, he, he's not afraid to put a person in costume, you know. No. It, it doesn't matter how it might seem funny to some people. It might seem weird to some people. Mm -hmm. But me, I enjoy it because... He takes a risk. He does it. The, the film gets made. ITN's picking up his films. You know what I mean? That's so that, right. must say, that must say something. You know? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. There is a there is a high quality. I mean, the interesting thing about Conjuring the Genie was that that costume came from Los Angeles, and partly because of COVID, it was held up in customs and. It was very anxious for Scott and for everyone in the movie because we didn't know if the costume would get there in time for all the location shoots that had been booked. And I think wow. it just did arrive and it was held up in customs and it was just a real nail biter. And many things in Conjuring with the Genie, I think Scott would agree, just seemed to be down to the last second and they would work out. But I agree. I think Scott picks people who are extremely passionate about what they do and uh, want to work hard and get the job done. He's very, very professional. And uh, you always feel confident that everything's really organized when he and Rebecca Matthews, his, his producing partner, and Reese, his, his other producing partner, when they work on things, it's all done really super. And, and you know, nothing is, is left in a slapdash way. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree. There's also another one that I have not seen yet, but I have it. It's called Rise of the Mummy. What was your experience like in that? Oh, that was another interesting thing because well, Amanda and I appeared in Bats the Awakening together. And then uh, basically the first day that film companies were allowed to go out and film again in the UK, Scott had prepared The Mummy Rising 
and classed us and we arranged all our costumes and stuff. It was all done over the internet. And we just, on that first day, we had to go to this location. It was a college that Scott had hired um, to just film Rise of the Mummy. And we just rehearsed at a distance as best we could. And the schedule was tight, but it was the, Bats was the last film I did before lockdown. Mummy was the first one I did when lockdown was lifted enough for us to film. So it was another stressful, kind of thrilling situation. And it was lovely to be back with my colleagues again and working together as a team again. So it was great. I am so glad to hear that because COVID, Nicole talked about it as well, about how COVID mm. shut down. Of course, it shut down America too as well. Um, one of the movies that I did um watch that i really had to it's a little bit different it's called cannibal troll yes now, <laughs> there's so many troll movies out there well, from the 80s anyways mm -hmm. so this is quite different and when i seen the troll i said to myself again dude this guy takes does not care he does what he wants to do and it turns out to be a very entertaining film again bravo to scott the guy, he, he just takes risks and chances and just makes these movies, and they turn out better than what you would think. And that's bravo to him. And the cast, he has the great cast in all of his movies. It's mm. just amazing how he finds the talent that just works with him and just does it and puts it out. But Cannibal Troll, what was it like to play the character of Emma? Well, Emma was another mother character. And I was really thrilled because, you know, the rest of the actresses were young, like young enough to be my daughter. So it was lovely to kind of be included because in a lot of horror genre movies like that, it would only be about a group of very young women. That's kind of what a lot of them are like. And I understand it. But it was super to have that dynamic of being a mum, kind of a semi mum to all of them a bit, although she's a slightly short sighted lady. I mean, she's a bit prejudiced um, and that's a part of her character, too. But they were all lovely lovely young ladies and it was a wonderful shoot and I'm I must say I think that this the locations were just beautiful I remember it was in a heat wave and the light and the sun in the scenes were just stunning we also went to this really beautiful place called Talliston House where we filmed the trolls lair and it was kind of it, it's it's kind of yucky but also there's some beauty about about that setting it, it's not it's it, it's actually attractive to look at it's interesting oh, I love it now I remember Nicola saying about how she always wanted to do a dinosaur movie. Mm. And you did one, uh, Dinosaur Hotel. Yes, yes. And the, I haven't seen them, but I have them. But there's quite a few of them. But mm. um, what was your... Now, for you, you know, it's one thing to be in a creature feature film. It's another to be in a horror film. But to do a dinosaur film, what was your it's experience amazing. like? Well, it was just thrilling to, I mean, that's another thing. Scott started using, um, oh, what's it, is it AI? Uh, when when other uh, other directors of that sort of budget probably wouldn't have had the guts to to go for it, but they, they he got these dinosaur, AI dinosaurs, and basically we obviously had to just imagine or we were given marks to show us where the dinosaur was and to react to it and imagine it was there. So it was a simply wonderful experience as an actor to yeah. to try and take yourself into that place because it would normally just be a very high budget production that would do something like that. And OK, right. there are more dinosaur films now, but at the time it was really it was the first chance I'd ever had to even audition for something like that. And so it was it was thrilling to as an actress have that journey. And uh, it was again in lockdown. We went to a place in Yorkshire to film it. And um, yeah, it was it was super. It was absolutely super. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, what you just talked about is acting like the dinosaur is there. Mm. You know, th that's talent. You know, to be able to pull that off. You know, to really make it. He's done so many creature features. You know, I know. Um, yeah, it's it's. I just I, I'm attracted to his work because they're fun films. You well, it's this imagination yeah. and the passion, the imagination yep. to see it and the passion to carry it through and make it work so well. So he is an amazing man. Um, he's, he's he's amazing. Good. He's a good actor, mm. too. Yes. Excellent. 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 Excellent.
I've seen both of them. They're awesome. Now, mm-hmm. you're, you're in a franchise. Um, there's two of them that we talked about, but I want to talk about Amityville Scarecrow. You know, yes. there's America has a bunch of Scarecrow movies, you know, over the years. And and I get a kick out of Amityville Scarecrow because of Amityville, New York. You know, mm-hmm. I have a friend that lives in Long Island and we actually went to the Amityville house. You know, Wow. Oh, that's, you know? that's kind of thrilling. Yeah. It, it's changed over the years. And of course, Amityville, not really true. You know, it's, it's most like a made up story. The killings yeah. weren't, but you have you played mary um mm-hmm. one of the sisters who mother who's bought this campsite with this um in amityville and mm-hmm. it was not what you expected it to be i thought the scarecrow in this movie was absolutely phenomenal he you was know, he was you can, do, you can make a scarecrow any way you want but he made it to where it wasn't unbelievable now what i mean by is you know how they make it they overdo it but the scarecrow in here was cool the storyline was cool i loved you as mary in here and no problem and of course both movies are available to be watched on youtube they are Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. so everybody can see it but yeah this movie here was a movie that really brought Kate Sanderson to the people's eye because you had a bigger role. You're actually one of the main leads. You're, yes. you know, the one of the sisters. And you were, excuse my language, absolutely fucking brilliant in here. Oh, I, this is the movie that really brought Kate Sanderson to my eyes. And do you want to talk to the listeners about your experience? Well, we'll just do one and two since it's together. Your experience sure. is like one. And now two is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. But you had more confidence. How do I say mm-hmm. this? I don't want to sound like a, like a dick. Um, you were phenomenal in the first one. But you really had the gusto, um, more confidence as one of the sisters in this movie to carry it forward right so, well that, that's you. good to hear i'm i'm i'm, I'm so unobjective you know because but so your opinion is is that's very good to hear so go ahead tell us about your experiences with amityville scarecrow you know how it came about and uh what was your feelings after the movie was made and then going into the second one well i i was really thrilled to be cast as mary because although you know i'm Every part I played for Scott has been really interesting and other horror movies I've done too, really interesting. But this was a substantial role and I felt it was a role that had a big emotional range. A lot was asked of this woman because she's put into situation that are a situation that's unlikely to, well, it's just hard to encompass. I mean, it would be hard for anyone to encompass. There are multiple traumas and sad history and and uncovering of really awful truths so I felt this was a wonderful opportunity for me I was so grateful for the chance and when it was done and I felt without being conceited that it I had done good and I had found what what I was looking for I felt confident in myself as an actor that I never had before I felt well you know if I never did another role I would feel that I did deliver with this one and it, I really showed what I could do um so it was a big, it kind of healed me in a way, you know, actors are on a journey. It's often quite a painful, long journey. There's a lot of turndowns. And then when you finally get something that, that that works and is, you get an answer to a prayer, you know, and it means a lot. And then Scott brought us back for Amityville Scarecrow too. And I think he would like to make three, but at the moment it's not looking likely, but he has a whole storyline of what would happen in three. Um, so maybe one day it will be done. Um, but it was lovely to come back and find that character again. I mean, again, very few actors would get that chance. And um, so that was great. And then to work again with, with Alex uh, Lacey, my daughter, and mm-hmm. Amanda, who played my sister. Um, of yep. course, the other family members, well, I won't, I won't go into the story, but they were not in the second one. And uh, then there were new characters as well. And it's taking off from where they've 
started to try and get the campsite going as a concern. And uh, yes, it was just dipping back into those people's lives and making the join kind of thing. So it was great. Yeah, because you went from, you know, two siblings fighting mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. to the second one where you're two both badasses. And that's what I thought was really attractive in part two is you guys were badasses. Oh, and yes, that, yes. That's what I loved because you went through it the first time. And, of course, the second one was different than the first one, so I'm not going to say too much more about that. Mm -hmm, but when you mm -hmm. find out who the killer was, it was, you know, I had a funny feeling just by the way he was acting in, early in the movie. Yeah. But I wasn't quite sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, bravo to you. I think those two are the two films that you're remembered mostly by right now. What I yes, mean is, yes, I agree. You did. And let's talk about another one I've not seen, but I'm going to watch. It's called Monsters of War. You played a character of Lynn. Monsters of War. Yes. Oh, that was another quite substantial role for me. I uh, was, again, playing a mum. Uh, and uh, my my son, actually, it's interesting because he was the scarecrow in the first Amityville movie. Um, his name's Richard Lovell, and he's a wonderful actor. Yep. So yep. he was the monster in that one. And then he was his, his own face is shown in Monsters of War. And uh, again, it's uh, kind of about dinosaurs and, and kind of fantasy, terrifying creatures that come up from the bowels of the earth and they start to terrorize people. And it's like we're in a war, but against an enemy that we don't understand. So again, a, a wonderful chance as an actor to go into that world. I love it. Now you were in the Curse of Humpty Dumpty. I love the Humpty Dumpty franchise. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dr. Paulson. Phenomenal yes. franchise. Yes. And uh, Spider in the Attic. I that's a good one. Let's talk about this now. I interviewed Nicola, then I actually watched this after I interviewed her. And mm -hmm. again, you talk about the CGI and all that, and how he made these spiders in this movie was brilliant. I know because it wasn't overdone. It was uh you were awesome in it as well, of course. I played and, a really bitchy character in that one. That was fun. <laughs> and I loved you. <laughs> I love that character too. Yes. Um, and then the end of the movie, you see that gigantic spider or whatever. It's on YouTube. You can watch it there as well. Mm. So what was it like for you now to, uh, you did a dinosaur. You did a, now you're doing a spider movie. And uh, did you get creeped out at all? Um. Well, you know that the house we were filming in is a place called Peaks Manor. And it's, it's, it's really beautiful because people go there to get married and stuff though scott mm -hmm. hired it out to make the movie and um, but it also is a slightly eerie quality it's kind of jacobean looking it's like tudor looking and um, there was a slightly odd atmosphere about it i would say when you were going at night to your room because it had cottages in the ground that we were all living in as well the wind whistling through the trees it was a bit spooky um but that was great for the film of course um and uh it was just Again, it was a really lovely to be, I think, you know, yes, Scott and, and Reese, they were both on, they were co-directing and staying there with us and uh, just with a group of creative and cast that I knew well. And it was, it was lovely. I mean, I had scenes with Nicole again. And uh, as I was playing this really bitchy, it's larger than life, uh, journalist, editor. Uh, yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Now, you also played in two other dinosaur movies. I've seen both of them, Jurassic Island and uh, Kingdom of the Dinosaurs. That's right, yes. Once again, he goes on a whim and does these uh, dinosaur films, and they turned out very nice. And It's a cool storyline for both. Yes, definitely. There is, there is definitely. Yeah. Now, here's one that you've done that um, it's called Croc. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I've seen every... American crocodile movie, alligator right. movie. And I wanted to check out Croc. And what's mm -hmm. cool about Croc is once again, he goes on, a, he, he just takes it all out there. He does not care. And to see that gigantic Croc, yeah, um, it's brilliant. You played Tabby. Mm -hmm. So now you went from dinosaur movies to uh, Killer Scarecrow. Yeah, killer spiders. Now we have a killer crocodile. 
I mean, you've yes. done you've done quite a different. You 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 have a a variety of certain types of horror films. We also have a a plastic surgeon that we're going to talk about too that I absolutely fucking loved you in there. But oh, yeah. um, Croc, what was your experience like in Croc? Well, I mean, it it was again like an actress's actor's dream, as I'm sure you know you you'll understand, Scott, when you're given the chance to create such a world that. I mean, it could happen, of course. I'm sure sometimes crocodiles have invaded human habitations and done damage. Um, but it, it was it was just amazing to be able to tap into that hysteria and that because obviously the well, I won't give too much away by saying that the film starts off as a beautiful wedding and things yeah. kind of go downhill gradually. Um and and so you you're starting off playing this character who's at the happiest day of their life and my son's getting married and it's all gorgeous and I have a lovely dress and everything and then you know gradually things start to go south and uh, for an actor it's just it was just another wonderful challenge that you um you know you're being pursued and tortured by this crocodile um, and just pretending it's there and when I saw it in the end in the film I mean it was so realistic it really did look amazing yeah. And he Mm, yes, yes. <laughs> I love it. Now, you also ventured into um, destruction films. I've seen yes. Shockwaves. Um, right, very, yes. A very unique film. The yeah. ending was quite unique. Mm -hmm. Now, again, i not trying to repeat myself, but you've been in all different varieties. Yes. Now, how was it in your first destruction film as shockwaves well i mean it was filmed obviously in in scotland and it was filmed on a, a road that's called james bond road because it's used by uh, film companies a lot because the setting is so beautiful and, and you can do lots of car chases on it and stuff and i was playing someone um who has her uh, driving along in her car and she encounters the hero of the movie and they yep. have an exchange and i i'm in just a couple of scenes but um yep. My, my character yeah my character i think it, it dies she dies off um in the in the in the earthquake and uh again a super challenge i wasn't there for very long but it was amazing and as i am scottish it was lovely just to be back in my own country and i went to visit family afterwards and the the beauty of the the mountains and the the setting it was just breathtaking i mean it, it, scotland is so beautiful um and as I Scott, I, I never, I, I ne it never gets old. And uh, as you say, being in a disaster film, it was just so lovely to be asked back to do more work with Scott. And um, in this beautiful James Bond road and even the place we stayed, I mean, the, the, the scenery was dazzling. People would pay so much money to have a vacation there. And we were staying there for our work. I mean, it was, it was amazing. I love it. Now, you went to another film that hit <laughs> Jack Frost, Curse yes. of Jack Frost. What's better than a Christmas movie with some snow and a killer? Jack oh, Frost? I know. Yeah, because you you want you're expecting everything to be all cozy and and nice, and then it goes pear shaped. Yeah. No, it was it was great, and I think I had a I had a a rather unfortunate experience with some Christmas lights. No, it was. I mean, once again, an amazing opportunity for me as an actor. I, I just, I loved bringing that to life and that terror that the character I was playing felt. Mm -hmm. It was, it. it was an actor's dream. I mean, it's, it's, uh, Scott certainly gives you meaty roles to play. And, uh, no, it, it was, it was just wonderful to, to be in it. And, uh, it was a beautiful little church that we filmed my scenes in. I think it's called St. Michael's Church. And yep. it's, partly an Airbnb now, but um, in order for the people who bought the air to make it into an Airbnb, they had to keep the church part there and to make it available for services once a week, which didn't happen when we were there, but it is still a real church and they don't mind people filming there. So a lot of films are made in this church and it's, it's a beautiful little place and the, the graveyard and the grounds round about it are also just charming. Um, so I've been there to make a few films. I think we also made um, Conjuring the Genie there um, it just looked completely different from the way it was dressed, but uh, no, I mean Jack Frost. It was it was absolutely super to to have that chance and to once again. I mean, I think I 
was I went to the set. I met my the actress playing my daughter, the actor playing my husband, and we rehearsed. And I kind of tried to make my connection with them. And then right. we did the scenes, and uh, I think they went they went really well. And we made a good bond with one another as actors in that short time. And it it was it was super. Um, and uh, Steve Staley was playing Jack Frost, and it was lovely to work with him again. So yeah. I mean, I I've got no grumbles. It was super. I love it. That's what I like to hear. I mean, to have fun. The chemistry mm. is chemistry is very important. You know. Yes, I think and, Scott helps himself by putting this team together that work well together and that share his yeah. his ethos. You got it. Now, a weird movie. Mm-hmm. That I enjoyed. Yes. A, a demon plastic surgeon. Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. You were one of the um, housemates. You lived there. And yes. You're all pretty much tricked into uh, getting whatever you wanted nose job, mm-hmm. eight, whatever. And I noticed you right away in, in a scene where everybody was sitting there, and I'm thinking, hmm. I wonder what Kate's going to get herself into. Oh, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> you're just, yeah, you're so adorable <laughs> when you're sitting there. It's just so you're so unique. It's just great. You, you know, you never know what you're going to get from Kate until you see Kate. And oh, just, thank you. It shows your 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 range of characters. You played Dorothy Cohen. Yes. Um, and not what was. Um, I can't remember her name now. She's the blonde, the demon girl. What was her name? Oh, it's it's Danielle. That's right, Danielle Harris. Danielle Lewis. Wait, Danielle. What's her last Daniel, name? Is it King? You, yeah, however, I've seen her yes, in a bunch of movies as well, and she oh, was great. Amazing. Here. She was very, great very strong too. actor. Yes. Sorry, Danielle, if, I'm, if you listen to the interview and I don't remember your name, I'm so sorry. I've <laughs> I have some I have so many names in my head right now. But what was your experience like in the conjuring of the plastic surgeon? Well, I really uh, loved doing that because although I'm I'm not old, old, you know, I am older than I used to be. And uh, it is hard when you feel, you know, beauty is, is gradually slipping away from you and you can no longer kind of pass as young, young. So this lady, Dorothy Cohen, she just, she simply longs to be beautiful and, and young again. I mean, they all do, but she... Mm-hmm really really wishes she could go back in time and and um and i think she she wants to have the liposuction she feels she's a bit um uh, plump and she wants to have a gym bod um yeah so that's what she asks for she maybe had a very good figure when she was young and um so again it's it's an amazing place as an actor to take yourself to it's like body horror that you you've willingly submitted yourself to this procedure, which of course people do have, though I'm sure it is quite scary, even if it's all a legitimate proper doctor and everything. Um, and then it's all, it's unveiled to you that it's a, a trick. And it's, it, again, it was just a wonderful scene to be able to play. And again, I had quite a lot of scenes as Dorothy. So you see a progression of her, you know, mm-hmm. in the home, meeting this new organizer that Daniel played so well. And then, you know, the other nurse characters and then thinking yourself into that that sort of situation. If you were an, a lady in a home like this and not much going on and a bit lonely and everything and just wishing that you were back in the past, you know, it was, it was a very interesting role to, to think about and to think through. So, you know, it was, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, I like doing that scene where, you know, she has the horrible operation and stuff and, the whole the whole movie is it's kind of a comedy horror because it is just mm-hmm. kind of a bit pushing pushing credulity a bit but it's hilarious I, I I really like that film yeah Danielle Scott um Danielle Scott phenomenal. of course mm-hmm. yeah I know I looked it up dummy me has my first name <laughs> her last name but anyways she was amazing in there yes, um, yes. I've seen her in a bunch of films as well so that's a cool part. Like you mentioned earlier, a lot of films has like Sarah T. Cohen, mm-hmm. and uh, they're all in these movies. So you, the chemistry is already there. They just got to build a new chemistry in the characters, and I think that's what makes these movies successful. Is because they know you know majority of them know each other and how they work 
and it makes it a lot easier. Yes. Um, oh, yes. Jack and Jill, you were in the second mm -hmm. one, I'm assuming, right? Or the third? Jack and Jill. Yes, I'm in the second now. one. Second one. Yeah. Yes. Now, I haven't seen them yet, but I have them. Um, what was your experience like as May in Jack and Jill, the hills of hell? Well, it was, I mean, it, it was another amazing time. Uh, Jack and Jill are these utterly demonic kind of feral twins who've kind of brought themselves up in, in the wilds and they're ruthless killers and they've got a reason to feel angry with their lives, which I won't go into because that's part of the plot. Anyway, right. my character May was trying to find a, one of the people who went missing in the first film um, as kind of a friend of their mom. And so we were filming in this beautiful cave um, on the on the coast. It was it was sort of near. Um, oh, I, I can't remember, but it was it was near Canterbury, but it was like the beach area. And uh, it was this beautiful cave that they dressed up with lanterns. And it was just eerie and a kind of oddly beautiful looking. And um, yeah. we filmed there and we also filmed at this campsite, which is called Puddle Dock Woods Campsite. And it's a place where Scott films a lot of his movies because it has countryside, it has trees, it has camping. And we did Amityville Scarecrow there, obviously. Because it's a campsite. Um, so we were at Puddle Dock Woods, which was familiar. And then we also had these beautiful caves on the beach. And I play this person who is just terrorized out of their wits by Jack and Jill. And they're just running, running through the fields and, you know, completely traumatized by what they've seen. And again, I hate to repeat myself, but it was just a fantastic um, experience as an actor to, to create that. And um, yeah, I think I remember the cameraman kind of gave me a high five after my my death scene. And I felt, you know, I think I think that went pretty well. So that that was a really good feeling. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what? any little thing, confidence is. It's very important. And mm. once you have that confidence, you can just do anything, you know? It means you're, so much when, yeah, yeah. You're, you're in a franchise. I have not, I haven't seen any of them, but there's like, I think there's five now. as a Tooth Fairy franchise. Yes, that's right. Yes. You played Zara. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't seen them, but again, I'm going to ask you, it's probably going to be the same answer, but what was the experience like in the Tooth Fairy? Well, the Tooth Fairy was was great because I was playing the head teacher of this school. Um, it was a primary school, uh, so for little kids. Um, and uh, basically, they've, they've, they've on the previous movie, the school, not my character, has gone on a, a, a trip, a sort of school camping trip, well, going somewhere trip. They stayed over and they encountered the Tooth Fairy. And then one of the teachers comes back, having been very traumatized by this experience. And in my my installment you know she's coming to terms with the terrible experience she had with the tooth fairy and then my my character is the headmistress she's trying to support her and be nice and um there are some again a bit like the plastic surgeon it's the same director louisa warren it's slightly comedy horror because there are some quite funny moments in it too and yeah. i i have this 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 head teacher for example there's a party scene where they try and welcome back the teacher who's you know had this really rough time and um the danny king and steve staley they they have a sort of um flirtation and i as the head teacher i'm looking at them great dis disapproval <laughs> and it's it's it is kind of funny because she's such a stuffed shirt although she's a nice person she's very straight laced and they're being really quite naughty i mean i don't know if in any school uh... teachers can behave like that but it was it was just great so there was this mixture of this comedy and and this character who might loved putting together this head teacher and then also the horror um aspect of the tooth fairy attacking them all and uh the 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 carnage that she she um wreaks and uh the tooth fairy is played by um samantha cull who's another uh, wonderful actress whom i've i've worked with quite a bit in scott's oh, yeah. films she's all yeah. covered up but she was really super as the tooth fairy but i mean everybody was everybody was was good and it was just lovely to work on that it was in a it was filmed in a really beautiful boys school in a quite exclusive gated community in in london so everything was very beautiful and slightly unearthly looking so like wonderful locations and you know it was super to be in it that's awesome because i will do a uh, a binge watch i'm going to watch them all and review yes. them all 
So stay, stay tuned in the future for that. I'll post yeah. them on your wall when they are done. And the oh, ones thank that you're you. Ready, thank now, you. You know, no problem. Now, there's three more and there's two upcoming, but you mentioned earlier, we talked about Medusa. There's mm -hmm. also one called Medusa's Venom in 2023. That's, that's right. Yes. And you played Gabe's mum. That's what was right. Yes. Like in that one? Well, that was interesting because I I was back in Puddle Dock Woods. There's a little kind of fairy tale cottage there, um, in in amongst the campground, and they were filming there, and I filmed there in other movies as well. But they dressed it to look different. So, I went there, and I think I had the same actor playing my husband as the one in Jack Frost. So that was that was <laughs> interesting. Yes, and I was playing Gabe's mum, and I. I didn't actually have any scenes with with the actor playing Gabe, though I'm sure he's a lovely person. Um, but I just basically the Gabe's parents arrive back from holiday and they go into the house and, you know, they are they're hit by the curse of Medusa. I won't say exactly what happens, but, you know, right. it's, it doesn't look good for them. Um, so that was really lovely. Um, just having that that small role, because at the beginning of a horror movie, the opening scene, how they set the scene is is very, very critical to whether people will carry on watching. So I was in that situation also with Jack Frost. So it's a big responsibility on you to try to really make that believable and work so that the audience wants to go and see the whole film, which I'm sure they would have done anyway. But it's if the first scene is, is flat or boring, it's going to be disastrous. So it was wonderful to have that challenge. Nice. Now the next one is I'm pretty sure it's on um oh my god, Demon Host. You played yes. uh, Newt Woodhouse, and that is on Tubi, if I ain't mistaken, in America. That that so, sounds right, yes. So what was it like to now when I saw the trailer of this movie, it it's a really weird trailer. I mean, mm -hmm. when I say weird, a good weird is you don't really know exactly what you're getting yourself into. I haven't seen it yet. Like yes. I said, it's on Tubi. Mm -hmm. What was your experience like in Demon Host? Well, Demon Host was another quite substantial role for me, and, and I was thrilled to get it. it. It's not made by Scott's company. It's made by another uh, yep. director, Ray Brady, who's also very prolific, but he makes slightly... It, it's a, he's a different different style than Scott's, but I mean... I love them both. It was wonderful. Um, Demon Host was hit by COVID. We'd got through about a third of the filming and COVID lockdowns happened. And uh, uh, Ray and Anne really didn't want to film if there was any danger to the cast. So it took a very long time to finish. Um, some people unfortunately dropped out of the film and uh, we had to just alter the script and, and, and keep going without them. But in the end, I mean, I had some wonderful opportunities, some scenes, you know, where like my husband um, dies in the film and I, it's, it's, it's by physical means, it's not by a supernatural force. And I had to react to finding his body. And I can, I was, you're an actor, you'll know what a gift is a scene like that to create that, to bring that to life. It yes. was really amazing. So Ray gave me wonderful material. And also they're a deeply, deeply Christian family in it. So they're also yeah. kind of in that rabbit hole. I mean, I'm, I would say I'm a Christian person too, but they're very, very devout Christians and, you know, do everything right. And um, so again, that was another fantastic challenge to step into those shoes. So I, I think Demon Host, you'll you'll enjoy it. Um, but it was uh, it took a long time to finish, but very proud of it. Now it is finished. Nice. And you're also one called Science Friction. Yes. Um Science fiction, I think it's an anthology of horror shorts. Um, and I played, uh, I, I did, I think it was more like a voice role. You know, you do you're, you're voice roles as well. I was yep. a voice role. I was doing this kind of creepy nursery rhyme over a, over a, a it was it's about five young people who go into the woods on their bikes and they come at a cropper, shall we say. Um, so I just filmed that. I, I recorded that in Ray's studio at his house. And um, yes, yeah, so I didn't have a very big role, but the the the, the short film, the one I, I that I took, that basically the short film that I contributed to, it is super and it's worth seeing. They're all excellent shorts, so it's a portmanteau horror feature of different short stories. Nice. Now you mentioned about short films. 
I played a character of Cephas. It's called the Hillbilly Horror Show. Oh, it's wow. Like, it's like I'm a mumbler and, and, and Bo understands me, but we have it to where short films played in between our scenes. And mm -hmm. the volume mm -hmm. one is available to watch. You can go on YouTube and look, just type in Hillbilly Horror Show volume one. You get a chance nice. to watch that. I think I you'll enjoy that. And you have two upcoming ones that um, a Ouija movies. There's tons of them and all different types. Yes. But this one, if you could talk about it, it's in production, but it's called a Ouija Castle. You play That's the character right. of Araya. Yes, yes. Or maybe Iria. Um, Iria. I, can't, I can't remember how we pr pronounce. Yes. Well, that was, I mean, another superlative. It was filmed in a beautiful Scottish castle last summer, actually. And um, it should be coming out very, very shortly. Um, it's it's a kind of horror fairy tale uh, kind of take on the Sleeping Beauty story. And oh. I played a maid in the castle. And um, I had another lady, Lila Lasso, who was playing my fellow maid. And we... Um, become disturbed by things that are happening in the castle to the royal family and so we we confide in one another and um yeah it's it's a supporting role but it was a very good part and i was just thrilled to do it i had been my mum's carer for a few years before that and it was simply wonderful to get back into acting again that was the first thing i did after my mum poor mum went into a home so yeah, yeah it was it was fantastic to do it and i'm really looking forward to it coming out well i'm looking forward to seeing it now too um mm. so we'll see what happens and then you have one called calling the tune you play yes the oh Marie. well that is set in the second world war and it's it's not supernatural or horror based although obviously it, it features the nazis in germany so it's it is it is horrifying but based in completely on reality it's um actually been based on on real life experiences in a small town in in france that the director researched very in deeply in in depth because obviously the nazis invaded france they took over and it was a game of cat and mouse and marie is someone who was part of the french resistance and spying um, for the resistance but being alongside nazis all the time and so there's that thrilling kind of as i say cat and mouse feeling will they get caught won't they get caught what's going to happen and who's a traitor who's a good person you know so it was beautifully filmed with a wonderful period detail and production values and uh, wonderful to be in a, a period film so that's another one that covid interrupted and it took a long time to finish but another one that is i'm sure i'm dying to see it when it's finally done and uh, it, it looks amazing Nice. Yeah, you mentioned the gardener earlier. I know, and Nicola mm -hmm. talked about the gardener because she's yes. in it as well. And of course, the gardener, the guy that played the gardener, is the the uh, newer version of Charles Bronson. That's um, right. Yes. And it's amazing how much he looks like Charles Bronson. That, that that's his his shtick now. But I've seen a bunch of his films. Um, what was it like to? Uh, this is more like an action film. Yes. Um, what was your experience like in the gardener? Well, it was it was really super. I would say my biggest problem was um, I suffered a gunshot in the gardener and I was having difficulty falling the right way. Um, and the, the stunt people were explaining to me, you know, how I should do it just accurately. But I had to have a few goes, which for me is not normal because I try to always do everything right first time. But I yeah. hadn't understood how gunshots affect people. So they were explaining it to me. Um, so I had to keep hitting the floor, but I did get it right um, eventually. <laughs> and they were they were quite complimentary because they're really buffed up, fit guys. I mean, they know all about karate and martial arts and just everything right. like that. They stun me, these stunt people. Um, so it was lovely to work with Bronzy. I was only there briefly. They did all my scenes just one after the other. And um, he was very nice, very courteous, lovely man. And Nicola, that's when I met her. She, everyone in the cast was so nice to me and uh, I remember I finished my scenes and I was going home and Scott said well you'll be back you know I, I liked what you did and I said oh that's that's really super and went off feeling as happy as, as a bird and uh, then a few months later indeed Scott called me and asked me to do Bats the Awakening and so after that you know I was in so many of his films and Rebecca's films for which I'm so grateful and um 
Yes, it's funny. The first one I did with him was a thriller and it was distributed by Lionsgate, which was just really thrilling. Um, and yeah, Scott said he, he looked at quite a number of tapes for the role. I was playing this French housekeeper called Marie and she, he looked at my tape and he said, we found her. And that's basically, that's the tape that introduced me to Scott and that started me on this absolutely amazing journey of, of working on so many of his films. And that's, tell you what, it's a great body of work. I mean, I know you and I'm in America. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. know, that's a, not saying that anything bad about that, but, you know, I just know who Kate Sanderson, that's why I contacted you because I really enjoy the Amityville Scarecrows. I thought that, mm -hmm. again, that you were brilliant in it. I love oh. the, uh, I love the motherly and, and how you became a hard ass in the second one. I just really enjoyed that. How you oh. made it, complete. you know, from your first journey mm -hmm. to the final yes. journey. Yes. Um, I'd be dying to see part three. Who knows? That could happen in the future. Who knows? I, I would love to do part three. And I, I think Scott would like to do it too, but you know, he's got so much on, on his, he, he's just doing so much now, but who knows? It could suddenly happen. And um, thank you so much. It means so much to me, Scott, that you've, you know, you've seen my films and noted what I'm doing because, as you as you know, acting is a lonely business. You just trudge on and on for long yep. periods, of thinking, "Am I crazy? You know, is this going to work out? Whatever." And then it's so wonderful when things do suddenly click a bit, or you know, someone notices your work as you've done to me. So I'm I'm really grateful. Well, I'm grateful to have you on today. Um, I just wanted to give you just have a talk. I mean, I, I like to hear people's experiences. You know, with Films that I enjoyed. It's it, it just nice to be able to talk to someone. To hey, you know, it's just a. It was a great interview. I really enjoyed you. Um, I'll post the interview, of course. But I do want to give you special thanks for coming on today. I really. Oh, a fun time. thank you. Me too. It's been really lovely, and um, I'm so I'm so chuffed that you've 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 um, seen my films and you know enjoyed them and and said so. So that's that's so kind. Thank you. Not a problem. I'm going to ask you to do one quick favor. I'll take out the interview. Um, would you like to do an intro for me? Oh, sure. What, what, what do you want me to do? Let's see. What can I have you say? Um, are you ready for this? Yeah. You can say, check out Gruesome Herzog. Check out Gruesome Herzog. One hit, okay. Say that back. <clears throat> Check out Gruesome Herzog's interviews and reviews. There you go. Check out Gruesome Herzog's interviews and reviews. Perfect. I'll use that for a while on my reviews so they can hear your voice. You know what? Take that back. Let's do it again, but I want you to say your name so, so they, they got a name with a voice. Are you ready? Yes. So do you, do you want to do the name first? This is this is actress Kate Sanderson from what UK or how you want to say it and just say, mm -hmm. Check out Gruesome Herzog's reviews and interviews. They are awesome. Yes. This is Kate Sanderson, a horror actress in the UK. Check out Gruesome Herzog's interviews. Sorry. Check out Check out Gruesome Herzog's interviews and reviews. They are awesome. Thank you, Kate. That's awesome. I, I'll Shall edit I, it out. I do it again, or did I flub that up a bit? Well, if you want to do it again, go ahead. Okay, it, it, okay. You're the actress. So check out Gruesome Herxel's interviews and reviews. Is that right? Yep. They're awesome. Yeah, okay. This is Kate Sanderson, horror actress based in the UK. Please check out Gruesome Herzog's interviews and reviews. They are awesome. Perfect. Beautiful. Kate, I want to say thanks again for having you come on. I know it's a good, good, good long ways journey from the UK to America, but... You were phenomenal. I love your work. My nephew's sitting here now listening to you. I'll try to get him to watch some of your films as well. I think he'll like them. Um, again, it was great to have you on here. Thank you so much, Scott. And I hope soon we can meet in person. Maybe if uh, one of my films goes to a horror convention and you're there you know, with a film of yours, we can finally meet up and have a coffee. Yeah, or I can just make a trip to England and meet you there and who That knows? would be lovely. Yes, definitely. All right, dear. Thank you very much for coming on. You are freaking amazing. These kids just went missing. One by one, they just turned up dead on the cornfields. I wasn't going to tell you. There's some murders on this farm. 
I just don't like the thought of everyone running off scared when they find out what happened here. We killed him. It's over. Even though they didn't find a body? I mean, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. Hello? We have gone to great lengths to make sure that this place is safe. 